all oh, right homemade Branston pickle or plowman's pickle as we sometimes call it right I'll go through the ingredients so uh, the ingredients I've got here you can make it out of lots of different uh, fruits and vegetables but we'll need something in there for some crunch and to that end I've got some uh, swede or rutabaga I've got that's about uh, half a kilo one and a quarter pounds of rutabaga there's about 200 grams of carrots I've got six apples two tomatoes I've got one zucchini and two brown onions I'm also going to need some vinegar I've got some white distilled uh, British malt vinegar here and I've also got some Asian rice vinegar I'll see how much I need as I go along I've got some dark muscovado sugar which adds a wonderful delicious deep flavour and sweetness I've also got some uh, soft brown sugar and that's really good a little bit of salt in case it's needed I think I'll need a bit about a teaspoon I would think and uh, I've also got a big pot to cook it in you're better off with a preserving pot but um, I'll also pick out a few a couple of spices as I go along but I'll show you those as I go so the first job I've got is to get all this cut up into small enough pieces uh, one ingredient I would have liked to have had but I don't have is some kind of dried fruit something like uh, prunes or better still some nice sultanas or large raisins would have gone nice but I just don't have them so they'll be omitted from this one if I did I would have put in uh, a good slack handful of of uh, dried fruit as well okay so the first thing I'm going to do is cut up the uh, apples and the things I'm going to cut up first are the things that are going directly into the pot so I just take those like that And just throw that in, just chop it up roughly and throw it in. It's all going to cook down this. You notice I don't skin the apples. Why waste all that gorgeous nutrition? It's too good to throw away. I'll nibble on those cores later. That'll give me a nice little lunchtime snack. Alright, the tomatoes can go in next. Again, just roughly chop them. I wouldn't say that tomatoes were an essential ingredient, but they're quite desirable in, in the Branston, in the Plowman's Pickle. You can also use green tomatoes if you're at the end of the season and you've got um, an excess of them. Apple, now I need one of my onions. I don't want, I want to add onion in two stages, but you'll see why in a minute. So there we go. That's all looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to get in some vinegar and what's that? That's going to be about, mm, what, about 400, 400 mils of vinegar. So I'm going to put all that in there. I'm going to add in four spoons, what's that, four tablespoons about? of dark brown soft sugar and I'm going to add in two tablespoons of muscovado sugar it's got a deeper molasses type flavour this has so there we go that goes in I might need a little bit more vinegar judging by it so I'm just going to add in about another 100 mil that brings it up to about 500 mils of vinegar yeah that's looking good right into that now I'm going to spice it so first of all I need an heroic amount of black pepper because I love love black pepper so that's a good couple of teaspoons worth of black pepper gone in there I love that and I'm going to put in some salt, about a teaspoon to start with, but we'll taste it as we get near the end. Maybe a little more, I think, a teaspoon and a half. 
stir that in. I also want to add in some warm spices, so I'm going to add in a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. I think I might add another half to that because I really love that warm spice flavour. Oh, it starts to smell great now in there. And I've got a nutmeg and a little nutmeg grater. I'm going to grate in a few, a generous amount of that. About a quarter of a teaspoon of it, I would think. I don't want to overdo it on nutmeg because nutmeg, although it's a mild and warm spice, it can be rather overpowering. I'm going to have a quick taste of that vinegar just to give me a rough idea. It's rather sharp. Now that's going to be there. That's all right. Okay, right. And the next thing I want to do is get this onto the heat. So that's the vegetables have cooked already. They're cooking away now. They're stuck. This is coming up to the boil. Now the reason we use apples is because it's got nice high pectin content plus I mean it grows abundantly here in the UK and it's got um, a, a quite high pectin content which is really good for, for canning because it, it, it adds really nicely to the texture of the finished pickle. So right back to the chopping and then I'll chop those up into small pieces and the way I do that is I go radially inwards like that and then I just cut across and I want them to be about that size and that will be the size of a lot of the chunks in this pickle and the reason we add the onion in two stages and the reason we add the vegetables in two stages is we want the softer vegetables and the apple and that they go to make up the the, the bulk of of the sauce for the brownstone and these vegetables added closer to the end of the cooking time are there to add the crunch so it's fairly straightforward I don't know why some people cut across there it's entirely unnecessary because they're in bands anyway maybe they do that that way because that's the way they were taught it just seems to be a waste of time to me there we go. We do things the way we do them because that's the way we've always seen them done and that's how we do it. Okay, so I'm gonna add all my crunchy stuff to a bowl. And then I'm gonna cut my carrots up into small pieces. Remembering that this is the final size they will be in the finished pickle. So take care with it and make sure you've got them all cut down to the right size as I'm trying to do here and they can just go in with all your crunchy veg all right that's got all that carrot chopped up all roughly around the same size my preserving pot or it's actually a big saucepan my saucepan is boiling away nicely so I'll turn that down a little bit and then I'll get this chopped up so this all wants to be chopped up around about the same size as the carrot it's a laborious process but when you have this lovely pickle on your plate with some crusty bread and a slab of cheese, you'll know it. So I'm gonna cut it first into slices and then I'll cut those down. And it's the, this, this, the size is getting them all round about roughly the same size. It's quite important as you will see because you want them all to achieve the same texture at the same time in the finished Branston in the finished Plowman's Pickle. I would have loved to have had Sultanas like I said but I, I will put them in the um, in the recipe sh sheet which is um, in the description below this video but, but you do have some flexibility on, on the uh, amount of, of um, vegetables you use 
but the reason I do it this way with a lot of rutabaga is a lot of this swede as we call it in the UK is because it gives a, a, a lovely crunch to the Branston to, to the pickle and it's worth taking the time to get it all chopped up neatly all right so I've got a bowl I've got I've added uh, I've got quite a lot of swede uh, or rutabaga so I'm gonna add a bit more of that to the to the softer vegetables and then so there'll be three sort of stages of texture so that's gone into the pot and these last bits I'll just keep right now to my zucchini I want to just cut that down and the zucchini gets added very very close to the end of the cooking time so I will add because the zucchini is very soft but I want to preserve its texture in the finished pickle I will add that really very close to the end of the cooking time so I'll leave that there and that goes in last so I'm just going to leave that um, boiling away in there on a fairly fast simmer for a good few minutes you want to cook it until the apples completely broken down so as long as it takes and you can cook it covered on a fast simmer okay after about 20 minutes I'm going in with my masher and I'm just going to mash up all that apple pulp and that helps it um, break down nicely. If you are cooking with dried fruit, you need to be adding it right at the beginning of the cooking process. And it does soak up liquid, so you might have to add a little bit more uh, liquid to the pot, but as that is right now, that is perfect. So uh, we'll just let that cook for another 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll start adding the other vegetables right that's cooked down rather nicely so I'll give that a stir that's been in there hmm, be about 40 minutes now so I'm gonna add in the crunchy vegetables at this stage and I think I'll add about half a cup of water as well because it's boiled down quite a lot and then I stir that in and we'll bring that up to a simmer and we'll simmer that now for I say about three minutes okay that's coming up to a low simmer I want to simmer it really until these bits of onion turn um, translucent and then it should be ready I just want to get a taste of that now mm. It's really nice it's still a bit oniony because the sugars haven't cooked out the onion just yet but um, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to that so the flavor you're after is a sweet and sour a well-balanced sweet and sour flavor with a little bit of saltiness so I'll stir that salt in and then we'll have another taste meanwhile you should have some sterilized jars waiting for when you pickle is ready let's have another taste yeah that's on the money bearing in mind that the uh, vinegary flavor will actually mellow out a little as it stores and you can use this straight away or some of it but you really want to have this in uh, bottles or or preserving jars for a good month before you use it give it time to develop full flavor so another minute or so and then we'll be ready to add the zucchini or the courgette as we call it okay the onions starting to uh, look nice and starting to uh, go translucent on me so I'm gonna add in my final ingredient my zucchini and we'll stir that in 
bring it up to the simmer and simmer it for another minute or two minutes. All we really want to do is get that heated through and pickled basically because we want to keep the crunch in all those vegetables and that's what sets a Branston, a ploughman's pickle aside from your normal standard uh, British chutneys and it's that crunchiness that you leave in the vegetables so I'm going to cover that and simmer that for a couple of minutes and then it'll be ready to can it all right you want to set up your station for your canning and everything must be scrupulously clean and sterilized uh, I like to put my jars on a tray in the oven and raise the temperature above 84 degrees Celsius and uh, let me see what that is in the old money 84 Celsius is about 180 184 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to raise it above that temperature and that will kill all the germs and then you put your stuff together again your jars make sure everything's scrupulously clean including the ladle that you fill them with make sure you've got the flavor the texture right and everything before you do this and then uh, let that cool down now to bottling temperature all right I've checked that with my preserving thermometer and it's at bottling temperature now so I'll just go ahead and start filling up my jars now it look, might look a bit runny as it comes out of the pot hot but don't worry about that there's plenty of pectin in the apples and that will set and turn that more viscous as it cools down and then I make sure that I wipe the edges of the container or jar and then seal that up perfectly and then we proceed to do the neck the rest of it so if you've done it right you've got these uh, caps with indicators on them the pop-up indicators and at the moment these are still hot but as they cool down the, um, the, the it will form a vacuum inside there and that should pop down and if it doesn't then you can't preserve it for any great length of time uh, but if you do I mean you can preserve this for at least a month and then it will go on for perhaps a year maybe even longer um, I've, I've, I've eaten pickle that's two years old before now perfectly good um, but uh, then that's entirely up to yourselves but I would recommend up to a year but uh, a minimum of, of one month because it needs to sit in there and develop those flavours and let the vinegar flavours mellow out a little bit Hey friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. 
If you would like to follow my channel please subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications for all my future videos. It would be great to hear from you in the comments and I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. You may wish to check out these titles or even help me out with a donation using the links in the description below the video. Thanks for watching.